Hey there, welcome to Jersey Jim Fish. Jersey Jim here. So you clicked on this movie to, to maybe see how to or learn how to bone shad. Uh, no, it's actually to debone shad. Boning shad would be kind of uh, kind of perverted. But uh, tonight, I'm going fishing. I will bone the shad and some of the fishing footage tonight, I'll put in the movie so that I am encouraged and you know, like smiling like I am right now while I'm editing. Right, so first we need to uh, pull the row sets. And to pull the row sets, you could use a knife or you could use a uh, tool like this. I made this tool out of a, uh, an old saw blade. So these fish, if you notice, most of the scales are still attached. Like this is a nicer fish than this one. This has got some bruising near the tail and near the fin. They catch them in nets with uh, live rocks. Live rocks. Right behind this fin, there's some, some thin skin right there. That's where you want to go in. It's right behind this fin. Skin's real. Yeah, see how I just went right in there? So you want to get your tool in there. And as you're going towards the vent, we're aiming for that spot down there. Right. You want to lift up and pull towards that spot on the belly. The idea here is that you don't you don't want to uh, cut into the row sack. Alright, so there's the row there. Now, yeah, perfect. You cut through it. And now, what you want to do is you get your sharp knife and there's a membrane that attaches the row sack to the, the body, the, uh, the cavity of the fish. You just want to cut through that, up that away, right? into that you can take your fingers and walk it towards the anus and then up towards the neck when you get up towards the head here you feel up here you'll feel the esophageal tract when you get to that you pinch it and pull back and that'll pull all the guts out like that See that? That's all the guts. That's all he's been eating for a while. And then you very carefully walk it out the other side. Now the bones on the other side can puncture this. You don't want to puncture it. You want a nice, clean, unpunctured row set. Like that. Just like that. That worked out pretty well. If I must say, I haven't done this in a few years, so... We'll just put that in there, get rid of that scale. And this is the first step. We'll, we'll scale them and process them after. But this is the, uh, this is the first step in the process to creating a boned chad. Now if you didn't have a knife like this, a fancy homemade knife like this, you could use like a, a pen knife. I kind of don't want to do it. Like, I'm not eating the row sets because they're absolutely freaking disgusting. But you could stick the tip of the knife in there. And run back like this. Yeah, I mean, just the tip. And only for a second. there's some green showing through right here See that green showing through the skin that means it's got a lot of stuff in its butt and it's been sitting for a while you know maybe three days two three days not a big deal but you know, something you want to look for plus the eyes the eyes are nice, nice and uh, I know, they're, they're convex, they're like that. See that? They don't look like that if they're not nice and bright with a lot of the scales on. You know, might want to reconsider your purchase. So, here again, we just cut through the uh, the membrane to the row set. We're going to go towards the vent. We're going to go towards the, the esophagus. 
pinch the esophagus and pull it out. Now this is exactly why it had some green on it. This thing has been feeding heavily in salt water. So I mean that's to be expected. So go ahead and free this one up, up towards the, the head, down towards the vent, and very, very carefully lift the roast head out. Now this is a this is a bigger fish, but we got a smaller roast head out of it. And it's somewhat from the contents of the guts. You see that brown right there, or that gray? It's somewhat spoiled already, even though these, these, these fish are probably only three days old. Like, still, still edible, still probably real nice if you're into that kind of thing. But the difference between the two, here, let me lift the other one up, I'll show you. One's nice and bright without that brown right that's a nice and clean looking one the color really doesn't have too much to do with it uh, diet has more to do with it there we go there's a little bit of of staining from the gut on this one but they're both real nice this one here definitely older so we'll put them in the tub and we'll try to find somebody who wants to eat them because I'm not eating them. I've tried them, not so good. So, I'm gonna clean that up. Probably would have helped if I carried a trash bag out. Oh, he feels like he's got something in his belly. Hang on a minute. This is like Christmas for me. Uh, it's that. That's what he's been eating. It's like small shrimp. Pretty good amount of vegetative matter. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and scale these up next. And I got them in this pan here so we can scale them and not get the scales everywhere. And as soon as I get set up to do that, I'll show you. The thing you need to do is scale them. And these scales flick everywhere. They make a hell of a mess. The skin on a shad is very thin. You got to be kind of ginger with this. It'd be a redhead with this uh, tail to the head. You got to get them all off, especially back here on the uh, the shoulder and back here on the uh, ventral side. I'm having a, a you see that? That's from the uh, the rotting belly cavity. So these are really nice fish, but you know, a few days, like a day after today, they'd be nasty. So you want to take take time to get all the scales off. It's going to help you out in the long run. Up here, you know, near the uh, front fin, get them all. Get them all. You're going to take time to do it. Get them all. in this thrilling process, this thrilling tedious process is to cut, and notice I'm not cutting in an angle like that, I'm cutting straight down through the head, liberate the head, liberate the tail, and you want to leave yourself a little bit on the tail, and not flip them over on your lap, I don't like it yet. and then, you want to come back and this cut we made on this side, we're going to make that same cut on the other side. Get rid of that, that belly flap. And one thing when you're scaling these, they have a really sharp, a really sharp edge down here. Like really sharp. I don't know if you can see that. Cut yourself on that real easy. Done that a few times. And then, I'm going to come back, and I brought my scaler in, but I'm going to get rid of the bloodline. Alright, so we can just kind of do that. Walk the knife out, scrape that out. 
Alright, that's it. That's kind of nasty right there. You see that? That's from the belly. Whatever it had in its belly. It was rotting. Still a nice fish. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a skookum fish this time. So we got him inside on ice and I will more than likely be slurring my words by the end of this movie. If not right now, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to rack them. Oh, it's a terrible sound for, for a really sharp knife. The knife was just crying. Did you hear that? The whining and crying? Uh, I'll show you something awesome you can do with these after. Like, there's a there's a bit of meat left on there on each side. And that the, the sweetest meat is closest to the bone. I'll maybe, maybe show you that. It's been a long day already. And we got a good start. Hell yeah, this is gonna be awesome. This will be awesome. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna put them in my fridge. So the next thing I gotta do is I basically have to put them on a board and chill them out. They, they have to be nice and cold for the next step. So these racks, these racks are absolutely probably, they're probably better than the fillets I have over there. So if you can take take the uh, the fins out, real easy, just pinch them up here and walk forward. All right, so the tail's down there, you walk the, the fins forward like that. Takes out the bones there. Oh man, this is gonna be good. After it's fried, maybe I'll show you this. Maybe maybe this will be my dinner tonight. Like I, I don't know. I don't know how, how late I'm gonna be awake. Yeah, 
in my prime, before I got to be an old man, um, I could process these things by the 60 pound box, you know, two or three a day, and, oh, damn, two or three a day, and this was a, a damn good meal, damn good meal. That's it. And that this would otherwise go in the gut bucket. And like I said, this is almost as good as that. It's just as good as that. Let's face it. It's the same fish. It's near the bone. It's probably better than that. I don't want to make that jump. But anyway, I'm going to rinse this off. Put that in the fridge without a cover. Let it dry out a little bit on the skin side. We need it to stick to the board. And I'm going to clean up all this stuff here. Holy crap. Alright, so in a minute. Alright, so here we are, boys. This is the process. I had to move everything around in my kitchen. I had to I had to dislocate my shark my petrified Mako shark vertebrae to get this to work. Let me wipe my hand off. But here we are. So if you look real close, oh this is gonna be difficult to explain. There's a row of bones that runs down here. See there's bones sticking out there. Alright. There's a row of bones that runs right down the center here. And then there's a row of bones that runs off off of this point down the belly. Alright. You don't have to take my word for it. If you run your finger backwards along the fillet you can't really feel these down here but you can definitely feel the ones up here and you can definitely feel the ones in the center on both fillets it helps to do them in series so you have two fillets and you're making the same cut over and over so the first cut is going to be oh about you know halfway between the vent and the pectoral fin, pectoral fin would be here and you just go straight down on the top side on the on the dorsal side right? and then you go the same kind of deal on the ventral side of that alright and this camera mount's gonna mess me up big time so the knife I'm using is a Dexter Russell 2333-9 9 inch blade. This is a shad boning knife. It is a shad boning knife. The other knife that I was using was a Dexter Russell 1378. That is a fillet knife. This is a utility knife. Well I mean it's a utility knife now until I sharpen it again this is a finesse knife and you are right in the way my friends I'm sorry I'm gonna have to move you out of the way here there we go so we're gonna go in same spot on this one down and again I, I apologize this movie's gonna be so long but if you want to know how to do this, if you want to see how to do it, you're going to have to watch the whole damn movie. Sorry. And by the time I cook this stuff, I will be slurring my words. So the next cut is on the, the south side, the belly side of this row of bones up top here. I'm sure you can see them. we go on the south side of that. About the same, same distance back. Alright, on both fillets. That's it. That's it for the first side. Alright, so instead of lifting the fillets up, we're just going to turn the board around. And I had to I had to rescue this board out from all that nonsense over there. Now this is the this is the good part. This is the part I really enjoy right here. So the bones, I don't know if you can see that like this this fat that's radiating up from the ventral side. It comes to a loin it's right here okay and the the dorsal side as well you know bring it up close so you can see it 
that fat right there and there and there's this loin right here so what we're going to do is we're going to liberate that loin and the way we're going to do that is we're going to cut above probably right about here all right we're going to start in right about there and the bones are going to be the bones are going to be like this and we're going to be cutting you can probably couldn't even see that the bones are like this right we're going to be cutting on this side of the bone so you'll you'll see what i mean in a second we're going to start the knife there and this knife is is pretty sharp and we're just going to draw back on the knife and i'm pushing down there's a fair amount of flex in the knife this way we're going to pull in towards the center on both sides there. All right, and what's that? What that's going to do? Oh, get a little close there. Yeah, if you if you feel resistance, that means you're too close. And I got a bone there. There we go. See that? That's all meat right there. Okay. I'll do that again on the other one. That's what I'm saying. You do them in series, and it makes a whole lot more sense. You don't have to pay too much attention to what you're doing. You can drink lots of beer and have conversations and whatnot with nobody in the room, right? Now we're just gonna draw back. And push that. We're not we're not cutting into the skin. We're about halfway in to the fillet. I got a bone there. Oh yeah, see that? There's the other one. All right, so we got that liberated. All right, and there's actually a membrane there. See the membrane right there. Uh, whitish looking membrane right there that's what we're going for right there so we get that pretty much liberated and you can see the boat the attachment points of the bone right there maybe see that Could play a and play a harp on that oh, that's about it right there it's about it on that side or is it like i said i haven't done this in a while Actually, there's a number of ways you can do this. I think we're going to go in from this side while we have it set down this way. So, these bones on this side of the fillet, they run out like that. So, we're going to start the knife a little further than the vent. The vent would be right about here. Alright, so we're going to go up, you know, like uh, that far. And we're going to cut straight down. And the bones will stop the knife. All right. Once we get into those bones, all the way down like that, and we're going to turn the knife. And the idea behind this long knife is that we can turn the knife and draw out in the same motion and, and put some schmegma on the floor for us to mop up later, right? And the bones will keep us, you know, keep us right. You know, we won't lose too much meat. That's the idea behind this. So that's that's all meat there. The bones are still in there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do kind of the same thing in reverse on the other side with it with a camera mount on the on the on the floor, which is gonna be kind of difficult. But we'll start up around around here. We'll get on this on the the north side of the bones. We're gonna pull out there, and then. I found the bones. I can feel the bones with the with the knife, and we're gonna run the knife out like that, just like that. All right, that's it. So we got a loin, another loin, another loin, bones and bones. Okay, I'll do that again real fast.
that's a beautiful thing right there and if, if you're if you don't know if you got any bones if you run your knife along the fillet this way you'll feel it jump over the bones you'll feel some ticking so that's it that's the tail end now this is the brilliant part where so you see this is so awesome I, I, I I'm really excited to do this because I haven't done it in a long time and I was really damn good at it at one time so don't judge me this is fun for me so we went on the the vent or uh, dorsal side of the cut that we connected the cut from back here towards the front and we're just feeling with the tip of the knife we're gonna run it out alright and the, the bones come really high towards the front here alright so you gotta kinda pull up like that All right. and you don't want to cut all the way out well maybe you do want to cut all the way out but I want a whole fillet here so that's that's about it alright I'll show you that again so we're gonna connect this spot here with where the bones come into the fillet here all right so we're gonna start here and notice I'm not using the tip of the knife like this I'm laying the knife down once I get the knife on those bones I'm pulling up on the back of the knife and letting the tip of the knife ride along the surface of those bones. Alright, so the belly side. The belly side's kind of a, a little bit different, but the same. It's all the same so you can't feel these on the belly side but they attach from the cut that we made up here remember that first cut they attach from the first cut to the second cut the loin that we took off of the back so you want to start your cut back there and you find the top of the bones you want to run out but you don't want to cut through right you want to get really really close but you don't want to cut through so the fillet holds together I don't know if you can see that knife through there but I'm right on the edge all right now we're ready to finish this thing so the bones on the front side see the, the bones on the back side are right here right so you want to put the front edge of the knife on the bottom flap that we made and you want to put the front of the knife under those bones and when you do that Turn the knife as you're drawing forward. tail here that's why we didn't cut it too close to the tail there's some bones that kind of intermingle down at the tail so you want to make a uh, you know, further cut than I did 
that's it that's all bones that's all bones do the same thing on the uh, the belly side you know, if you can if I mean if you have a lot of these to cut you line like six or seven of them up or like three or four of them up and it makes it easier because you make the same cut over and over and over again that's all the that's all the bones from the belly side so this this right here my friends is a boneless shad fillet uh, it's pretty ugly but like I said I haven't done this in a, in a few years so that's awesome so we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap this one up in saran wrap and that's it that's a boneless shad fillet that's a bones of a shad fillet that's all of them. That's a boneless fillet. Inside out porcupine fish, that's what they call them. Hey, not so not so not so tough now, are you? Right. I forget where I stopped off with this one. That's why you do them in series, right? Alright, so yeah, what what I messed up on is the back side here. Alright, after we freed up the loin and took the side bones off. What you want to do, what you want to do, when you get them off of there, is you take your knife, you see where that membrane is right there. Watch this, see that membrane right there? That membrane? You take your knife and you actually make sure it's nice and straight. You jam the knife forward and then you run out the other side. It's all coming back to me folks. Right? How to do this fast? I mean, I'll do the I'll do the next two fast. So what are we doing? We're going canoeing or fishing. Yeah. Is that your fishing attire, Bill? Probably. Probably this and maybe some some sunglasses and bow shoes. Beauty. And you got the what? What are those socks? Wait, wait. Oh, what? What's the name of the video game? I get. Cubert. Yeah. The Cubert sock. The UPS got bad things for autistic. I am autistic. Uh, 450 in the oven for 12 minutes with the recipe on it from my channel. The recipe and then in the broiler for what, like three? Four? Yeah. Alright, let's eat, Dill. Grab the potatoes. It could have, uh, it was too close to the element in the broiler. 
and the bay leaves kind of smoked a little too early it could have stood to be at a lower temperature further from the element because it is kind of too moist right you said no i i, I don't i have nothing to compare it to so oh ah, yeah it's too moist take my word for it it is too moist as you look up there but anyway that's uh that's the cooked shed great experience dylan a religious experience right and boneless right yeah it's good yeah religious experience indeed religious experience for me takes me back a really long way in time it was a i mean it's a brilliant fish uh dylan dylan doesn't eat anything but tuna for him to eat and like shad is 12 to 14 percent fat sometimes up to 16 percent fat it's about the oiliest fish you can eat uh, a lot of people would you know say it's you know, as oily as bluefish. Bluefish is like 3.7% fat. So, I mean, it, it's got this this aura of being a oily, strong fish, and it's so mild. It's so delicate. It's so moist. It's like eating. It's like eating butter in a way. But yeah, so that's gonna be. I'm probably gonna break the movie up so if you watch my channel with any regularity if you're one of the, the 10 views I get on a regular basis um, you'll see this you know like how to pull a roast set uh, you know, stuff like that I think I gotta break it up but this is the long version of it and it's what 40 it's it's close to an hour long um, if you want to see how the shad racks are cooked so I boned all that shad and I pulled the rose sets and I don't eat the rose sets I, I've eaten them in the past I, I'm not I it's an acquired flavor which I have not acquired a flavor a taste for so uh, no shad racks I ate or no shad row I'm sorry I ate the shad racks that night with all the boned shad boneless shad in my fridge I ate the shad racks. Like that's how good they are. If you want to see that movie, you're gonna to need to see. You're gonna to need to check out. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna start a new uh, playlist. The Gut Bucket Gourmet. The Gut Bucket Gourmet Shad Racks. That's gonna be the name of that movie. <clears throat> and I like. I'm really sore. I just got. I took the kayak out for the first trip in salt water in 2018 last night. I, and it was a lean night. I only caught 10 fish, but that's going to be another movie. I got a bunch of movies coming up, so hopefully you'll check some of them out. Um, thanks for joining me. It was a pleasure to make this video. It really was a pleasure to make this video. Don't judge me. It is, uh, you know, like it, it takes me back in time to when I was doing this, you know, cutting fish for 10 to 12 hours a day. But again, Thanks for watching. If you got to this point in the movie, thumbs up, man. You're, you're, that's an adorable, adorable viewer right there. Um, leave me a comment. Tell me what kind of fish you want me to fillet. You need instruction on any kind of fish. I could probably do just about every, some of them, the odd species I'd be really interested in doing. So let me know. I, I filleted look down fish one time. It sucked. It's like filleting a newspaper. So don't ask me to do look down fish. Boy, are my glad. Yeah. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. All right. Saw that one on the screen. Just dropped to him. Hell yeah. It's not even like eight o'clock yet. That's awesome. It's a decent fit. I mean, it's a small fish, but...